Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third installment of the Metric Minute, brought to you by Vault Performance. I'm Kareem Durkawi, and this episode covers eccentric duration, a metric that analyzes counter movement jump strategy and helps measure fatigue. Simply stated, eccentric duration is the time an athlete requires to descend from an upright standstill to the lowest point of the squat before jumping up. This metric is valuable for many reasons. Since relatively considerable force is required to decelerate body mass speeding downward, some heavier athletes descend slower to extend the eccentric time and minimize the braking power required. This strategy is also a hallmark of athletes with injuries or others with low eccentric strength or rate of force development capacity. Another use for eccentric duration is in fatigue monitoring. As mentioned, significant braking power is required if an athlete drops quickly for a jump. A longer eccentric phase will reduce required braking power and give the athlete time to muscle through the movement rather than explode upward. The take home message is that eccentric duration informs us about movement strategy and compensations that occur when an athlete's fatigued or injured. Force decks can determine duration, velocity, as well as braking power during the eccentric phase, in addition to squat depth and many other key metrics. We will discuss all of those in future episodes, but for more information, feel free to reach out to us at Vault Performance. Thank you very much. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some awesome practitioners who are always trying to evolve and continue to grow professionally throughout their career. The problem with many of us, though, is finding a new outlet, a new way and a new perspective on the questions that we may have, whether it be programming, whether it be situational with dealing with coaches, or whether it be career advice. Because all too often what happens is we get stuck in with the same group of friends and the same group of colleagues that we reach out to for advice repeatedly over and over again. But what we should really be looking for is different perspectives, different people who have been through different situations who can help us make better decisions both for ourselves and our athletes. And one awesome place to start with that is the forums in the Strength Coach Network. In the forums in the Strength Coach Network, you'll be able to reach out and get feedback, input, and advice from coaches from all over the world from everything from career advice to training modalities to programming, there's people there just for the same reason as you are, to try to get better, to learn, to share information, and to grow the field of strength and conditioning. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S to dive into all that great content today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay DeMeo coming at you with this week's edition of My Thoughts Monday. You know, last week, we touched upon some things when it came to purpose and how important that was and how important that's been to us, our staff, the whole performance team, really, and how training together has really led to some massive improvements in collaboration and helping to keep that purpose going. Well, today I want to talk about that second part a little bit more and kind of the reasoning behind my thought process with that. Or maybe reasoning is not the right word. Maybe just my assumption for what is connected to that. You know, and I touched upon how, you know, we, we put that program together and that was a really big purpose for us for those few months leading into July when the young people that we got to work with in the summer, you know, they returned to campus. It was great, you know. I mean, obviously, there were some questions. There were some things of intrigue, some pushback, because the whole thing was novel. Like, it was completely unique. Sort of like the entire situation we're living in right now. Um... But then as things continued to go, right, there was more and more pushback. There was more and more fight as more and more people came on campus, which led to more and more issues. And then basically, you know, all the work, I wouldn't say was for naught because I think that it was a tremendous learning experience and has brought us together as a team and as a staff so much more. And I think that there's so much that's going to come of this. But... What I would say with it is it taught us a lesson um, and a very, very big lesson. You know, for a long time, I've been called 
a lot of things, man. I've been called a lot of things. Some of which I would never say on this podcast. But it, when it comes to our world, other than some choice names, I've also probably been referred to as the 1 by 20 guy, the Omega Wave guy, a monitoring guy, analytical guy, whatever. And I think that as that person, the Omega Wave monitoring 1 by 20 combined guy, I think the one thing that I was taught through all of this is that coaches aren't ready for that kind of stuff. Sport coaches, for the most part, aren't ready for that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's outliers. Yeah, there's people that want metrics and to understand load, trip, velocities, yada, yada, yada. But for the most part, I don't think they're ready for it. And I say that for a few reasons. But the biggest reason is simply the fact that we had success in this progression and coaches weren't, aren't willing to not put the pedal down at eight hours and have these young people do pretty high volume and high intensity work right away. They're not willing or open to you know, we just went from eight hours. They've been off six months. Should they really go straight in to 20 hours after that break? Or should we progress it? If people aren't willing to listen to simple, rational thought in the most simple, rational situations, the idea of utilizing complex metrics makes zero sense. Now, there are some coaches that are ready and there are some people that are ready. I think a lot of performance staffs are ready. I think sports med and strength and conditioning coaches or whatever we're calling ourselves nowadays, all over the world have a tendency to be way more ready for this. I've also talked about ad nauseum that it is possible to have success in situations where the only things that are being altered and manipulated are what you do to help prepare the athletes when it comes to these things. Which, that was also another huge purpose of mine when I was doing that. But again, another story for another day. So I'm not sitting here and saying, throw your GPS in the trash. I'm not saying, throw your monitoring system in the trash. I'm not saying, take your RPE and stick it where the sun don't shine. What I'm saying is, we need to clean our house first. We need to take care of our home first. And if we can do things where we can take care of the athletes and we can better them under our watch, teach them better lessons, right? Not provide information, but drive positive behaviors. As Dr. Nelly said in that podcast a couple weeks ago. If we can do that, then maybe sport coaches will see that there are other things that we can do. But if after a six-month layoff, six months, half of the year layoff, we still have a majority of sport coaches who are unwilling or unable to baby step their way back into the practices for their teams when most of them aren't even playing this calendar year. I don't think they're going to care about time over 90% heart rate or 
distance covered at high speeds. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But I just don't see them really finding that information to drive decisions better. Because at the end of the day, if your monitoring system is not helping to bring better discussions and drive better, more educated decisions, then what are you doing with it? And again, not saying to get rid of them. Again, I'm not saying there's no value. There's a ton of value. There's so much value. There's so much we can do with them that they don't even need to be involved with. But as Hank Kreshenhoff has said numerous times, many sport coaches would rather outwork teams than beat them. And I understand their paranoia. And I understand what they're afraid of. And I understand why they're worried. But I also understand that I've watched enough sports in these past five months and I've read enough information in these past five months and I've witnessed enough of these negative ramifications that have occurred because of the lack of preparation due to lack of equipment, lack of time, lack of everything, and the traumatic injuries that have occurred. That if people can't say, whoa, maybe we need to slow down, I don't care what your $100,000 system tells them. They ain't listening. But that's just me. You know, I think there are situations and things that we can do better to help bring about more buy-in, lead-in, or better decisions with those. But that's what we'll talk about next week. But now, that's just one thing that really showed up, is that especially when you have coaches that are on these committees and are involved in these conversations, and when push comes to shove, they're walking away from the progression and doing it how they always have because, you know, they think they know better. They're just not ready, dude. That's it. Maybe they will be someday. But right now, I just don't know too many that are. I see too many that have systems or utilize systems, and they talk about them as effort gauges. Or they look at just like weird metrics, like things that we know are probably the least of the importance. Or they misread metrics to try to prove a point or use it kind of to dictate things to kids. And we know that's wrong too. So, Hopefully one day it'll happen. Hopefully one day they will be ready. Hopefully one day when the dust settles and everything clears and hopefully this COVID thing is gone, that eventually sport coaches will be like, you know, maybe there are those things that we need to be better at too. But until then, I just don't think they're ready. But I do know that many of us are. So if you can find ways to help the kids be better and to help put a better product on the field for the coaches, that's still our primary objective. That's still what we need to do. And we still need to find better ways to be more efficient, to put out a faster, more robust athlete that is ready to play. But that's all for number two when it comes to these kind of life lessons during this COVID period. We'll be back next week with number three. And as always, truly appreciate everything y'all do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We'll be back next week with another My Thoughts Monday. I'll see you then.